Uh, so, uh, welcome to the second video of the Transform Phenomena class. So, in this video, uh, I'm going to introduce the Advanced and Generic Mathematics book to re review the, the mathematical concepts is uh, used in the uh, transport event. Basically, uh, to understand the physical meanings of the events happening inside of the system in terms of transport and to drive um, the conservation equation to solve this equation and uh, to analyze the solution we need to have very solid uh, mathematical background actually in personal i recommend you to read and to go over this uh, book called advanced engineering mathematics for me, it contains many important concepts and uh, most of the things in this uh, transport phenomena class, the, the concept and the mathematics uh, you can learn from this book. Actually, in this uh, video, maybe in the next uh, video, I'm going to introduce the chapters and the, the topic inside of these chapters in this book. Uh, this book is named Advanced Engineering Mathematics and by Greenberg and Second Edition. Actually, if uh, we go over this book chapter by chapter, I just want to go to the first chapter. You say the first chapter is the, the introduction to differential equations. So, the mathematical formulation of the problems in engineering and the science usually leads to the equation involves derivative of the one or more unknown functions. Such equations are called differential equations. In the derivation of the conservation laws, we will get uh, PD's partial differential equations for the microscopic level. For the macroscopic level, we will deal actually all these and uh, ordering differential equations. And the first chapter of this book give you some basic insights of this, what is differential equations, definitions, and when, what are different type of differential equations, what are their solutions. So uh, differential equations, equation contain, containing one or more derivatives of a function under consideration. Let's say you have any system defined by boundary. You want to measure any uh, system extensive property in, in second uh, uh, things you need to define. And then you derive some uh, mathematical formula to represent uh, to measure this uh, chosen uh, extensive property or the system. And you uh, basically represent the change of this uh, extensive property inside of the system by any function is continuous and has derivative as many as we need. So that's why differential equation mean the equation containing one or more derivative of the function under the consideration. So these are give some actual examples from the beginning. If I continue ordinary and partial differential equations, uh, actually, uh, the class, uh, classification of the differential equation is the first one is the ordinary differential equations. Uh, ordinary differential equations mean it contains all ordinary derivative with respect to single independent variables. Uh, if you, we go in the first video, uh, for example, in here, basically for the derivation of the macroscopic equation with drive ordinary differential equation uh, like here we see we call this macroscopic representation of the system uh, or mathematical formula uh, ordinary differential equation we need to know the solution of the ordinary differential equation that's why the first uh, uh, part first uh, classification of the differential equation is ordinary. In the second one, we call partial differential equations. 
Uh, act to partial differential equation contains partial derivatives with respect to two or more independent variables. Again, when we go back to the system, in the continuum level, the chosen uh, extensive property of the system, let's say the temperature is now dependent on the uh, coordinates x, y, z, let's say, and the time. That's why if the system uh, property is dependent on the two or more independent variables, we call this partial differential equations. We see here uh, the example of the partial differential equations. Let's say u is dependent on x and t. In here, u is dependent x, y, z. And u, again, dependent x, y, t, and so on. Okay, let's continue. Actually, in here, I just want to um, mention the important uh, part of this book. What I try to do, I try to show what's inside of this book. As I said before, like the, the, the book of the Transfer Phenomena, second edition by Bird, I try to teach you how to use this book. And later on, during this course and in later in your life, you can come back and you can read the basic concepts and you can, uh, when you come over uh, some uh, problem or some the concept, when you need to know the, the mathematical background or the, the when you need to read the mathematical concept, you can come back and you can read uh, the, the concept in this book, but first you need to know what's inside and uh, which part, what contain and what you need and where you can find. Actually, this is my goal in, in this given this video and this overview of this book. So, also, uh, you can create some uh, more than one uh, di uh, differential equations. We call this a system of differential equations, actually. You see, this, these are the three um, ODs, ordinary differential equation. You need to solve for the x1, x2, x3, you need to solve these three ordinary differential equations simultaneously. Okay, let's continue. The order, in here, the definition of the order is uh, a differential equation is the order of the highest derivative. When you go your differential equation, you can define its order. What is the highest order of derivative? The more generally, you can define any first order of these in this form. You see, x, u x, u is dependent x, and u prime means first derivative, u double prime is the second, and u n is the nth derivative. Uh, okay. A solution. The definition of the solution is the function is set to the solution of differential equations over a particular domain of independent variable. If it is a substitution into the equation, reduce that equation the identity everywhere within that domain. The solution of the uh, differential equation means any function, when you insert this function inside of the differential equation, you should have the left side and the right side is equal to each other. We call this identity. Okay. These are some examples. When you go read on these examples, you can get more uh, detail overview inside. In application, however, one normally expect that if a problem is formulated carefully, then it should indeed have a solution, and that solution should be unique. That is, there should be one and only one. The uniqueness mean you should have only one solution, not more than one. We call this unique solution. Thus, the issue of the existence and uniqueness are very important in the, the solution of the differential equations. These two important concepts. In here, another uh, important paragraph, initial value problems and boundary value problems. Uh, differential equations, if uh, we satisfied, 
the unknown function is often subject to condition at the one or more points and interval under the consideration. When we try, we drive some differential equation to represent our system as the under the some condition we call this interval. This condition specified at the single point often call initial conditions. Let's say the time is equal to zero. Your system, let's say you try, you you uh, drive some differential equation represent your temperature inside your system. This condition give what is the temperature of the inside of your system for the time is zero. We call this initial condition. Then uh, the differential equation together with those initial conditions called the initial value problem. And the other one, the conditions specified at the both ends are called boundary condition. And differential equation together with the boundary condition is called boundary value problems. The two classification of the differential equations. Some examples here. You can go over it. And another uh, classification linear and nonlinear differential equations. And order differential equation is said to be linear if it's expressible in the form. If we get the, this form for any differential equations, we call this kind of differential equation is the linear. Otherwise, we call it nonlinear. So, in this form, let's say you have this f x function value zero, then we call this type of differential equation is homogeneous. If not, otherwise we call non-homogeneous differential equations. Actually, when you compare the linear and the nonlinear equation, in general, the, the solution to deal with the nonlinear equation is uh, far more difficult than the linear equations. Uh, actually, linear equation solution can generally be found either in the closed form or as an infinite series for nonlinear equation, one might focus instead of upon obtaining qualitative information about the solution rather than the solution itself. So on, this is the important paragraphs. So we continue here. These are the exercise parts. Another point: introduction to modeling. Uh, in this, the actually mathematical analysis is begins once the problem has been formulated. When you formulate your system, you when you define your boundaries, your extensive properties, and your time. Then when you derive some uh, mathematical formula represent some change of properties in your system. Then your uh, mathematical analysis starts. Many uh, detailed discussion related to modeling on your system is handled with the application courses such as heat transfer, fluid mechanics, and uh, so on. Many other courses you can go, you can see modeling on the system there. Now. We continue, actually, in the most uh, uh, engineering courses, you first go and model your system, derive your mathematical uh, formulas, and then you try to solve them. Uh, actually, most of them is contains ordinary differential equation or partial differential equations, maybe simultaneously. Then you analyze the solutions. Before the, the analyzing the solution, get the solution, you need to model your system and derive the mathematical equations. When we continue and through the chapter two, in chapter two is covered the differential equation of first order. In general, we can represent the first order uh, differential equation in this form x, y, and y prime is equal to zero. We call this first order differential equation. In here, x and y are independent and dependent variables, respectively. x independent, y dependent variable, y is dependent to x. OK. 
escape. Then the linear equations. We know what is the form of the linear equations. Actually, uh, the, the general first order linear differential equation is represented in, in here. And can we express the, the one is the in this form? Then we can solve this equation by some techniques. In here, in the first uh, case, homogeneous case, if we uh, set the qx is equal to zero, then we can reduce the, our linear differential equation as a homogeneous differential equations. And to solve this uh, num number two equations, in here, actually, we uh, start with the simpler special case, q0. We call this homogeneous. Then in here, as we know from the undergrad course, it gives you the solution like this. In here, i is positive or zero or negative and an arbitrary constant. We know from the undergrad course. And it's covered the detailed analysis of the first order homogeneous linear differential equation solutions. It's covered here. Okay, when you continue in here, you see the integrating factor methods. We know from this undergrad uh, course, it's uh, covered in here, 2.2.2. You can go over here. Okay, let's continue. What's more in chapter two? You see here, 2.2.3. Uh, they cover the topic of the existence and uniqueness for the linear equations. Uh, a fundamental issue of the theory of the differential equation is the whether a given differential equation in this form has the solution through the given initial point y a equal to b in the x y plane. This is a question of the existence. We call either this differential equation has solution or not. We call this the concept of the question of the existence. If a solution does exist, then what is the next part? Then our next question is that the solution is unique or not. Is there more than one such solution? That is a question of the uniqueness. Finally, if we do indeed have the unique solution, then over what x interval does it apply? Then when you solve all your uh, derived differential equation, you need to answer all these uh, three questions orderly okay then we continue the overview you see here the theorem is 2.2.1 existence and the uniqueness for the linear equations this is the theorem you can read from here and i just want to continue as i said before in here i just want to show you what is inside of this book and what you can find in which chapter and second chapter is the part of 2.2.4 variation of the parameter method another uh, solution method of the differential equations we call also this lagrange method is following in here so in this chapter what we so we saw what is first order differential equation and what is the solution of this differential equation. And in summary, we start solving the differential equation is linear differential equation and homogeneous linear differential equations and so on. What are the solution methods? Okay. When we uh, continue. Also, in this chapter, we see some uh, special uh, case of differential equation like Bernoulli, Riccati, and Lagrange, and Clairaut's equations, so on. And another important thing, we can use some computer software to utilize the solution of the differential equations, such as Mathematica, and MATLAB, and MAPLE, and so on. We can solve, drive differential equation by using these computer software tools okay i just wanna uh, continue 
uh, these are the exercise part of them. Now the application, the application of the linear equation, are, uh, you see from in this here, uh, part two point three. Actually, in this uh, section, uh, some physical application in engineering for the first order equations is gonna show. You can go and read these applications. You see from here. I just wanna show briefly. Go. Over. Uh, I'm not gonna go over these examples, but if you wanna learn more, you can go and read in this part. You know the, what is the page, and in which uh, chapter and which section of this chapter. Okay. Some mixing problem, especially in chemical engineering, you can encounter these mixing problem problems and so on. So this is exercise part again. Mm, I just want to continue. Uh, okay. So part in chapter two, the part two point four is uh, talks about the separable equations. This is another type of the differential equation. Some type of equation is separable. So what are separable equation and solution of separable equation? You see from here. Actually, the form of the separable equation is should get this form and the solution of the separable equation in this form should have and solve the equation like this as an example for the separable differential equations uh, again another another topic is existence and uniqueness is optional topics you can find in this book and existence and uniqueness uh, theorem 2.4.1 uh, in here Again, if we continue, And in part uh, 2.5, you see the exact equation and integrating factors. Another uh, group of uh, type of differential equations and the solution methods. In here, you see develop the solution techniques for the first order differential equation are linear or separable. In addition, Bernoulli and Riccati and other type of equation. In here, it's considered one more important case, equation that are exact and one that are not exact but can be made exact. In here, the book is uh, cover the topic, the exact differential equation, and the same, the differential equation are not exact but they can be made the exact differential equation. Uh, so 2.5.1 is exact differential equation. You see here. And in this paragraph it says given M X Y and N X Y suppose there are does exist an f x y such that m dx plus n d equal to d f then we say that this is exact differential and that uh, number six is an exact differential equation the definition of differential equation in here two questions uh, come up 
how do we determine if the such NF exists and if it does then how do we, do we find it then we need to use the following uh, theorem to answer this question first test for exactness you need to use the to find the exactness you need to utilize this theorem according to this theorem dm over dA and dn over partial dn over dA partial dn over dx should be equal to each other this gives you the exactness condition in everywhere in R okay another uh, section in this uh, chapter 2.5.2 integrating factor uh, introduce the integrating factor and the solution of how to use the integrating factor and the solution of integrating factor so then it's go closure and the exercise part and chapter 2 review you see here the first order linear equation representation the solution of the first order linear equation general solution and particular solution then Bernoulli form of the linear equation Riccati form and Lagrange and Clairaut form and section 2 for separable exact uh, separable differential equations that homogeneous case almost homogeneous case and section 25 exact differential equations and theorems and the solutions that's it in the chapter 2 the book cover is linear differential equation of second order and higher in the second part first order differential equation but in this uh, chapter it's covered the, the second order and higher differential higher order differential equations uh, first order representation of the first order differential equations in here in this form but second or higher order differential equation representation is like this it's linear let's call this constant coefficients in here a1 a0 a n minus 1 a n is our constant and homogeneous if f x equal to 0 in the first case the solution of the second order higher in the second case is cover constant coefficients and non-homogeneous this time a's are zero uh, constant but fx is not zero and the third case non-constant coefficients is gonna cover now is continuous is non-linear uh, uh, equations first order nonlinear equations second and higher order so on another important concept is in the part uh, section 2.3.2 in this chapter 3 is linear dependence and linear independence definition and linear dependence and linear independence a set of function let's say u1 is to u un is said to be linear dependent on interval i if at least one of them can be ex expressed as a linear combination combination of the others on i if none can be ex expressed then it sets linearly independent the definition of linearly dependent and linearly independent in the function set of function okay there are any other important concepts in in this chapter in this book but i just want to mention the uh, most important uh, part we are going to use in the solution of the transport uh, phenomena equations and microscopic and microscopic equation actually we continue In section 3.3, you see is homogeneous equation general solution here.
you see the second order and higher order uh, differential equation solution. In here, by general solution of the uh, number four here, an interval i, we mean in here the meaning of this general solution, a family of solution that contains every solution of the uh, number four on the interval, that interval i, and by a particular solution of the number four mean, any one member of the family solutions actually we we can get the general solution of the uh, differential equation uh, we call this the family solution but we can get a, par a particular solution is, is uh, we call this the member of this family uh, one just single solution of this family solution again existence and uniqueness for initial value problems is theorem um we can go read from here And another theorem is the superposition solution. Here, important concept. Uh, now, if we continue, a boundary value problem. Before here, initial value problem is cover, and then closure is after boundary value problem and exercise part again. Actually, the section 3.4 in this book, chapter uh, 3, is covered the solution of the homogeneous equation by the case of the constant coefficients. In here, let's say you have the higher order differential equations. In here, the A's are constant and homogeneous. What is the solution of this? Uh, case and Euler formula and the review of the circular and hyperbolic functions. In here, we know this formula is Euler's formula and other important relation related to this formula here. The section 3.4.2 is covered the exponential solutions like here. And this equation on its left hand side are called the characteristic equation in here. You know this from the undergrad course and characteristic polynomial. And respectively, corresponding to differential equation number 18 in here, in general, Number 22 gives two distinct roots like this. We know how to solve this algebraic equation to find the two roots. We say we can call lambda 1 and lambda 2, which can be found from the quadratic formula as like this. Okay, let's continue. Maybe I know it's uh, kind of boring, but um, the method, method I just want to follow to introduce you this book and how to use it. And in here, my intention is not to teach you everything. Basically, you know all this concept from the undergrad course. And I just want to mention and go overview and to show you where which information where you can find and you can use in transport phenomena class. Now, 3.4.3 uh, is higher order equations. If is n is greater than two, we call this higher order equation solutions like this. And again, The case of repeated roots here you can find example and theorem is the 2.4.2 repeated roots of the characteristic equations here you can find again end of this uh, stability. And another theorem. 
and end of this actually section here and exercise problems in next part ne next section of the chapter 3 we call this the application to harmonic accelerator, accelerator and free acceleration problem and some application of this uh, cases here you can find in here actually Another uh, section in this chapter, the solution of the homogeneous equation, non-constant coefficient, this is the, the final case. For the higher order differential equation, the, uh, the first part was constant coefficients and, the, uh, and at the same time homogeneous being. At the second time, second case is was constant coefficients and non-homogeneous, but this time solution of the non-constant coefficients here. can find here it's the cauchy euler equation if the, the equation number one is the, the special form of like this in here j's are constant it's called the cauchy euler equation and it's also called the dimensional equation in here the concepts Okay, uh, let's uh, continue in chapter 3. In chapter 3, section 2.7, it's give you some uh, inside of the solution of the uh, non-homogeneous equations. If the right side of the differential equation fx is not zero, we call this non-homogeneous uh, linear equations. In here, in this part, it's cover the solution of this kind of equation is general solution, like here, and some theorem, general solution of the theorem, uh, related to the general solution, and another theorem we can find here. And uh, section 3.7.2 undetermined coefficients for the solution of uh, the nonlinear differential equations. So, in here is give you some steps the method of the undetermined coefficients, the solution of the non uh, homogeneous differential equations. Um, We just continue and section is give this 3.7.3 variation of the parameters in here. You can find the theory and the concept and the solution method and example like here and so application uh, part 3.8 you see. Sorry. Now uh, we need to go 3.9 was the application part. Sorry, 3.8 was the application part. Uh, 3.9 is give you the system of linear differential equation solutions. As I defined before, when you model your system, 
you can have more than one differential equation represent your system to solve the to measure or to observe your uh, extensive property of system you need to solve this uh, differential equation simultaneously in this part it's covered the solution of the system of linear differential equation parts give some example and the existence and uniqueness of the system of linear equations and theorems and theorem beyondes and solution method by elimination we know this from the high school when you have some uh, more than one uh, algebraic equation you can solve them by elimination similar uh, type when we continue you see here some examples and some deep information you can find here and computer software so on so review of chapter three this is the end of the chapter three actually what is give you chapter three a differential equation far more uh, tractable uh, so far uh, so now in here the most important is that the end order, higher order linear equation in this form is equal to fx with constant coefficient or not. A general solution is expressible as the sum of the general solution like this to the homogeneous equation and any practical solution uh, to the full equation like this. We see this in this chapter. So uh, we saw high order differential equations and custom coefficients equations um, constant coefficient but non-homogeneous and non-constant coefficients so on we saw all this uh, type of differential equation and their solution in chapter 3 so basically uh, I'm gonna uh, stop the, the, the this video and mathematical review uh, video is a first part in here. What I gave here, try to um, reach my goal to introduce you to the bo book of advanced engineering mathematics. What is inside and which chapters and which section of in which uh, chapters what cover and how can we utilize in the transport phenomena book. In here we saw. Uh, what is differential equation, what their types and what are the different type of differential equation, first order, second order, higher order, and what their types, homogeneous, non-homogeneous, constant coefficient, non-constant coefficients, linear, non-linear, so on. How can we solve all these different type of differential equation? You can find in this first three chapter of this book. And I say, uh, see you in the next video, I hope.